All right, so the next type of factoring that we're gonna do is um, our special cases. So we have our perfect square trinomials, okay? So what this means is trinomial means three. Um, we have three terms here. Now this term here, the a squared, is um, your perfect square. So like four is a perfect square, um, x squared is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect squared, and so on. And then the same with this one is b squared, and then you have the 2ab in the middle, okay? Now the 2ab can be a minus sign in the middle, so that means that here your signs are going to be minus minus, or if it's positive, plus plus. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go over the examples just so it makes a little bit more sense. So if we look here, you can see that 4 and x squared are perfect squared, because you can take the square root of 4 and get a whole number that gives you 2, and the square root of x and get a whole number, so it would be 2x, okay? Now, the 25 is also a perfect square, okay? Because when you take the square root of 25, it gives you a whole number, it gives you 5, okay? So then when you write these factors down, um, so it says is 2 times 2x times 5, does that give us 20x, okay? Where do they get the 20x from? They're getting it from this section right here. 20x, okay, because this middle term here, they say it has to be 2 times 8 times b. Well, 2 times 2x times 5, so 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20x, so this is correct. So that means that these two factors here um, will be a perfect square trinomial. trinomial. So it'll be 2x plus 5, 2x plus 5, which in turn would be 2x plus 5 squared. That means the same thing, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and look at the examples. Now, I don't want you guys to feel like it's super complicated, but it says determine whether each trinomial is a perfect square. If so, factor it. So let's go ahead and try to factor it, okay? Looking at the first term, we have 25x squared. Well, 25 is a perfect square because 5 times 5 gives us 25. And then x times x is x squared, okay? Then here we have 4. So 2 times 2 gives us 4. All of these are plus signs, so that means it's plus 2, plus 2. Okay, so let's just check real quick because it says determine whether it's a perfect square trinomial. So this is how we're going to check. 5x times 2 gives us 20. No, not 20, sorry. 10x. And then 2 times x is 8, 10x. So it's kind of like an upside down rainbow. So once you do that, you add these together. 10 plus 10, does that give us 20? Yes, so this is a perfect square trinomial. And then instead of writing that as 5x plus 2 times 5x plus 2, when we factor it, it would be 5x plus 2 squared. Okay, so that would be our answer. So let's go ahead and try the next one. All right, so x squared is a perfect square because x times x gives us x squared. Okay, then we look at the 49. Well, 7 times 7 gives me 49. But this is a negative 14, so negative 7 times negative 7 would give me a um, positive 49. So when we go ahead and check, x times negative 7 is negative 7x, negative 7 times x is negative 7x, and when we add these, does this give us negative 14? And it does. So then that means that this is a perfect square trinomial, and it is x minus 7 squared. Okay. Looking at the next one. Here we have 9x squared plus 30x plus 100. So we know 3x times 3x gives us 9x squared. 10 times 10 gives us 100. And all of these are um, plus signs. So it's going to be plus. It's going to be plus. Okay. Then we go ahead and check. So 3x times 10 gives us 30x. 3x times 10 gives us 30x, and when we add these together, it needs to add up to this term right here. Well, that is not the case here because 30 plus 30 gives us 60. So this one is not a perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial. So now we have difference of squares. So here we have a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. That's our next one. Okay, so here, if you notice, it doesn't have three terms like it does here. We don't have this missing term where it's a number times x. Okay, we don't have that here. We just have the x squared and we have the 25. 
So the way that we factor these is, um, it's quite similar. So we do our two factors. Okay, so 64 is a perfect square. So eight times eight gives me 64. And then x times x gives me x squared. Okay, now this is a negative 25. Well, five, we know five times five gives me 25. But because it's a negative, that means one needs to be positive and one needs to be negative. Okay, when we check this real quick, 8x times negative 5 gives me negative 40x, and 5 times 8x gives me a positive 40x. So when we add these two together, what happens is they cancel each other out. It gives us zero. So that's why there is no middle term here like there is in the previous problems. It's because it cancels out, which makes this a difference of squares. Okay, so I'm just going to erase this. And that's it. That would be our solution. All right, the next one here we have x squared minus 100. Now, you don't need to check all of them. I was just giving you an example why this one doesn't have that middle term. Okay, so x times x gives us x squared. 10 times 10 gives us 100. One of them needs to be positive, the other one negative. That's it. All right, here we have 4 and 121. Both of these are perfect squares, so we know that 2x times 2x gives me 4x. Um, 11 times 11 gives me 121. One has to be plus and one has to be minus in order for it not to have that middle term in the middle. Okay, then you run into problems like these, number eight. So we have 2x squared minus 32y squared. Two is not a perfect squared, we use 32. So it even tells you right here, First, start off by factoring out the greatest common factor. So between the 2 and the 32, we can factor out a 2. And we're left with x squared minus 16y squared. And we go ahead and factor this out. So we have 2, and then we have x times x gives me x squared. Um, 4 times 4 gives me 16, and y times y gives me y squared. 1 is plus and 1 is minus, and that's it. I'm going to do one more example. I know it's not on here, but it should be um, on your delta map. So let me see. Um, we can have 16x to the fourth power um, minus... Um, So when we factor this one, 16x to the fourth and one are both perfect squares. And the reason for this is because four times four gives me 16. X squared times x squared gives me x to the fourth. And then we have minus one and plus one. So negative one and a positive one would <clears throat> give me that negative one. Now with this one, you think you're done here. You think you can stop. But if you notice, this is another difference of squares, okay? Because 4 is a perfect square, so is x squared, and so is negative 1. So this one right here can break down into two more factors, okay? So 2 times 2 gives me 4. x times x gives me x squared. And then this is a negative 1, so it's going to be plus 1 and minus 1, okay? Here we have 4x squared plus 1. This one can't break down, and the reason is because of this sign right here, the plus sign, okay? If it's a plus, then we're not going to get that um, middle term to cancel, so it's just going to stay like that. We don't do anything to it, just the one with the minus one, because that's considered to be a difference of squares. See how it has to be negative here? Okay, so that's it. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.